I've chosen my KiwiSaver because it's the same place my bank accounts are, and then that means it's on the screen when I check my accounts. Was that a good move, or am I being silly? <laughs> That is a convenient move mm. for you. Downloading another app takes seconds, and I'm sure it's something that... I don't have seconds in my <laughs> day. I'm too busy. <laughs> you're working hard for your money as well, so <laughs> it's probably uh, something that, you know, if you're lying in bed at night, before you go to sleep, you can quickly download an app and, and make the change, and Liam can talk to you how easy it is to actually change. But convenience over your future wealth, you know, again, think of that when you're 65 that would be a, a decision that you will regret. Be like, I should have downloaded that app. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Should have just pencil in half an hour or an hour, you know, at some stage and just actually sit down, think, do a bit of research, look into where you are invested, look at the options out there. You know, just pick up the phone, send an email, ask the questions you want and just actually invest that time in yourself. You know, it's, it's very quick and there's a lot of resources out there that can actually help you. Because mm, I feel like one of the things that's held me back as well is that I've thought to change my KiwiSaver to another provider might be quite a bit of effort, but is it actually not that bad? Super easy, mate. Uh, you take five minutes to fill in an application form with your new provider and they, they do the rest. So they'll contact your current provider. Um, your current provider has 10 days to make the change. All the money funnels through the IRD, so the IRD keep an eye on the transfer process. They make sure that your new account's been set up properly. Uh, and then you'll get an email from your new provider within that 10 day window uh, telling you that the money has moved across. That's it. Mm. Super simple. Some people with their KiwiSaver, they don't even make a choice on what fund they're in. There's just a default fund. How do they work out which fund is the default fund? What is the default fund? Yeah, so uh, the government every six years sets the new default regime, so to speak. And so you can apply to be a default fund. And if the government grants you that license, if you like, you are one of a number of default funds um, that anyone who joins KiwiSaver but doesn't choose who they want their provider to be will be allocated to. So at the moment, there's six default providers. So you've basically got a one in six chance of going to one of those providers and their funds. At the moment, a default fund is a balanced fund. So you'll definitely be in a balanced fund, but which provider you're with, that's a game of chance. Mm -hmm. And so it's most common with people who start a job for the first time, so school leavers, things like that. Their employer will give them a KiwiSaver form. They say, yep, I want to give 3% into KiwiSaver. The rest is done for you automatically, and you're just allocated uh, a random provider. Wow. So a lot of people out there probably are just in this provider that they were randomly allocated, they've never thought about it. Yeah, there's hundreds of thousands of people still in a default fund. But as I've just said, it, it takes five minutes to actually make an active choice and choose who you want your provider to be. And for the time poor, like yourself, I know you've, you've, you don't even have seconds <laughs> in the day, the Sorted website is a really good place to start because they've got a tool uh, that can help you pick a provider. So it'll ask you a series of questions and they'll recommend a provider and a fund for you. Nice. Okay, so when I'm choosing a KiwiSaver provider, what questions should I be asking? And should I have asked that question three episodes ago? Or am I asking good questions already? Can you tell me that I'm doing a good job because I'm a comedian and I need constant validation? I think... No, you're doing a great job. Thank you. There was a big pause there, actually. Oh, look, I didn't want to answer straight away because you might think I haven't thought the answer through. Well, it was, it was quite a few seconds. I could have <laughs> downloaded an app in the time you took. There's a few you can ask. I think ask... Um, you know, what have your returns been? Past returns aren't an indication of, of future returns, but a track record can give you some comfort that, you know, the provider you're, you're speaking with has um, a good track record and knows what they're doing. Ask them what their fees are and what their value for money is. It's, fees are, of course, important, but if you strip away fees from performance, that's where you get the value. What service do you provide? Do you provide advice? Do you have digital tools? Do you have an app? You, you like apps. I love apps. That's why the banks keep you. And as Caitlin said before, the size of the investment team is quite important, isn't it? Definitely. Look, if, if your investments are all over the world, it's a big job to manage those, monitor them, you know, be ready to, to trade, i.e. to buy or to sell when the opportunity comes up. So you want to know how many people, what's the bandwidth in terms of the investment team to be able to manage your money well. Mm. You want one direction on it, not just Harry Styles. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, Westlife too, I reckon. You get them all in there. Westlife, yeah. wow, throwback. Oh, boys own. Get them all. Yeah. I want five boy bands <laughs> yeah. covering my investments. Of high quality. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Backstreet Boys are not allowed. No, and NSYNC as well now. Oh. Yeah. Well, hurtful. Hopefully they're not watching. <laughs>